Now we're going to talk about the 70 series combine and everything we're going to talk about today can be found in the operator's manual. Um, this needs to be in the cab with you as you're harvesting. Many times if you call in asking for help, we may have you reference the manual so you can see pictures or understand better what we're speaking to you about when you call in, but keep this book handy and uh, you go through it before you head to the field. We're going to talk about now the maintenance and care of the feeder house reverser. Um, this is the reverser on the 96 and 97 series combines on the 70 series. Uh, this is the high torque variable speed feeder house. Um, when you're in harvesting in corn conditions, you have two grease cirques on the, on the reverser. What you want to do is roll this belt to where you have one zerk that's at 12 o'clock and one zerk that's at 2 o'clock. Um, each day and once during the day, you need to give the zerk at 12 o'clock 12 pumps and you need to give the zerk at 2 o'clock 2 to 3 pumps. And once you've done that, you need to speed the head up and then slow the head down several times to work that grease on those cams. What this will do is this will make sure that the reverser maintains belt tension properly and then you won't have any slip. Slip creates the heat which boils the oil and causes gear case failures. Along with that, there's a dipstick right here, right behind the reverser. Uh, take that reverser, or raise the feeder house all the way up and lower the safety stop. Take the dipstick out and then on there, there should be oil on the knurled part. There'll be a little part that's knurled up, and the oil level should be within that knurled part for the proper level. And that's how we check our gear case to make sure it's properly uh, maintained. Next, we want to talk about maintaining your upper variable speed for your feeder house. There's two zerks on the top, on the inside of the, of the upper shiv, and they'll be right together. Uh, those need three to four pumps. Every 10 to 15, every 10 to 15 hours, um, they're on the inside. Many times, it's easiest to roll it around to where the zerks are pointing down at the ground. Then you can come up from the bottom and grease them. But those are on the inside of these two shivs uh, on the upper feeder house. Now we're looking at our real pump drive, which is right below the electric clutch and on the inside of the left-hand dual. Uh, there's a grease zerk right here to grease that real pump bearing. This gets missed an awful lot. Uh, needs to be hit at least every 50 hours, if not more often than that, and give it five or six pumps uh, each time that you do grease it. But about every uh, 10 or every 50 hours or so, we need to be greasing that, if not more often. Here we're looking at the cab clean air filter. Uh, you remove the cab air filter bracket, then you remove the wing nut off of the cab air filter, remove the filter, and you can blow it out. And many times, especially in heavy dust conditions, this may have to be done daily, if not more than more often than that. But that's located just outside the door on the cab. Here we're looking at the primary countershaft gear case dipstick. This will be on out on the ladder landing behind the access door. Reach back in there and pull this dipstick once a day to check the oil level. Now I want to talk about one of the more important things that gets missed on daily maintenance of the combine. Your rock trap is really important uh, to empty it out daily um, for reasons such as if, if you leave it overnight uh, it's going to be harder to clean out if you clean it out of an evening number one you're probably already dirty and number two uh, it's much easier to clean out because it hasn't sat overnight and the dew collected and it get packed in there uh, also leaving it for an extended period of time uh, the material and dirt and other debris gets there and it fills that rock trap up and as that happens then if you do happen to ingest a rock it can't displace the material already in the rock trap and then your rock will go ahead and go on through your machine. But to empty your rock trap, right now it's in the em empty position. Uh, to close it, simply push down on the handle until it makes the face, and then give it an extra push until it latches over center. To open it back up, pull out on it, give it a tug, and it'll open up. Now if you do this uh, every day with a long garden rake pole or a garden hoe or something of that, that uh, type, you can reach in under there and don't even have to crawl in under the feeder house. If you do happen to get in under there, make sure you have the feeder house stop in place uh, if you're going to be underneath the feeder house to clean it out. And that's, that's the importance of the rock trap. Here's the hydraulic reservoir in your combine. Um, the, the sight gauge right here, you need to check that with the feeder house on the ground and just make sure that it, the, the sight gauge is between the two marks. This is a sediment bowl on the bottom right hand side above the rear axle for your fuel system. This comes right out of the tank and is a 250 micron screen. This is just to get large debris out of your fuel system. 
Um, this has an O-ring on it. You shut the fuel off at the bottom of the tank and then you can remove this bowl and clean it out. Uh, you'll see over time you'll get bean fuzz, uh, corn, corn stalk, uh, leaves in here. Uh, but this is just a pre-filter before you get to the main filters up top. Here we're up in the engine compartment right behind the grain tank. Uh, this is the coolant recovery tank for 2009 model year machines and later. Uh, earlier machines still have the coolant recovery tank back on the rotary screen. Uh, but this, this has been mounted up here to do a better job of removing air from the coolant system. This is the grease bank uh, underneath the unloading auger. This grease bank used to have a lot of grease zerks and most of those zerks went for the unloading auger swing. You'll notice that those zerks are now gone. What they've gone is a poly wear strip is up there now. Um, one thing we've noticed last year from using the combines without those grease zerks there now, if you're unloading on the go and consistently leave your auger out, you'll want to cycle the auger in and out you know, once every three or four rounds just to keep that surface from getting, getting bound up and then unable to retrieve the unloading auger. There is one 400 hour grease zerk there and uh, that's about a once a season zerk. Here we're looking at the grease bank up by the unloading auger by the variable drive shiv. There's four grease zerks that are 50 hour and one 400 hour grease zerk. These are again up, up underneath the loading, unloading auger and that's what they are going for for the unloading auger swing. Well, now we're up in the engine compartment and what we're looking at is the dipstick for the main engine gear case. This needs to be checked daily for, to maintain the proper oil level. Here we're looking at the upper fan drive for the cleaning fan. Um, this bearing right here is, has a zerk. It's hard to see on camera, but it's right behind uh, this metal bracket right here. That is a 50 hour zerk. You need to give that two to three shots every 50 hours. Now what we're looking at is the zerk for the sump well for your vertical, vertical logger for the unload. Um, this bevel gear, it says in the book it needs to be done every 400 hours. However, we recommend that it's done every 100 hours. The reason for that is, is a lot of water and grime and, and bean juice and everything sits in this area and uh, you need to keep that bearing purged uh, with clean grease. So if you hit this every 100 hours, give it 5-6 pumps every 100 hours uh, to maintain this bearing right here. This is the variable speed drive for your rotor. There's a zerk on there. This needs to be hit every 50 hours with about 20 shots of grease. And then once you've done that, you also need to grease the inside shiv right behind the rotor. And after you grease that one, you need to cycle the rotor speed through its speed range up and down several times to distribute the grease. Once you've done that, uh, you should be good to go. But this needs to be done about every 50 hours. Also in this shiv for the upper variable, or for the rotor variable shiv, there is a pipe plug. Every 400 hours or once a year, this pipe plug needs to be removed and a grease zerk installed. Uh, at that time you need to put 40 to 45 pumps of grease in the pipe plug and then remove the pipe plug or remove the grease zerk and reinstall the pipe plug. Here's a grease zerk on your inner drive shift for your torque sensing unit right behind the rotor. This grease zerk needs to be hit about every 50 hours or so with about 20 shots of grease. Once you've given it the grease you need to speed it up and slow it down throughout the speed range to distribute the grease and this needs to be done about every 50 hours. Here we're looking at the upper chopper jack shaft on a 60 series combine or a 9570 only. The 96, 97 and 9870 will not have these two zerks. They've gone to an oil bath design but on a 9570 or any of the 50 or 60 series you will have these two zerks right here and you need to hit those every 50 hours. This has been a problem point if not if not maintained, so make sure that you hit these two zerks every 50 hours. This is your unloading auger drive shear bolt. Uh, if you get something stuck in the unloading auger, this bolt will shear and the spares are hanging underneath the bracket just on the inside of this pulley. Here we're um, referencing the location of the slide on the power shaft running from the main engine gear case down to the primary counter shaft gear case. Right here at the U-joint in the middle, there is a telescoping portion and that's a once a season zerk that you need to hit every season and all that's there is for the telescoping portion. The U-joints have no zerks. Now we're looking at the fuel filters on the engine. This fuel filter is your primary filter. This fuel filter is your secondary filter. This is a canister style filter and it is 10 microns. This is a spin on type filter and it is 2 microns. To change the fuel filters you remove, remove this black canister 
and put install your new filter put the new canister put the canister back on spin this filter off put the new filter on you don't need to fill the filters then turn the key on for approximately three minutes and then the engine should start it has a primer it has a priming pump and should be self bleeding here we're looking at the left hand side of the chopper uh, on the inside of the of the shivs uh, there's a bearing housing casing on each side of the chopper uh, we happen to be looking at the left side uh, there's a zerk here that you need to hit every 200 hours and give it four or five shots of grease every 200 hours now we're on the right hand side of the chopper uh, this is behind, underneath the plastic cover on the end of the chopper shaft there's a grease zerk here and you need to give that four to five shots every 200 hours we're looking at the grease zerk for the discharge beater this is on the left hand side of the combine behind the light uh, light bank the switch bank on the left hand side of the machine uh, this is also a 50 hour zerk that you need to give two to three shots every 50 hours. There's a grease bank on the right hand side above the feed accelerator belt. This, these two zerks, one, one uh, greases the, the separator drive bearing on the front of the rotor. The other one is on the primary counter shaft bearing uh, up above where the primary counter shaft comes from the left to the right side. This is your fan, your cleaning fan grease zerk. This grease zerk is located on the left hand side of the combine on the inside of the dual, uh, right on the cleaning fan shaft. Uh, that grease zerk is a 400 hour zerk or once every year. And uh, that one needs to be hit about every 400 hours or once a season. Here we're looking at the left hand side of the combine. Uh, there's a grease fitting on the feed accelerator shaft bearing. Uh, this is a once a season or 400 hour grease zerk. It's right in front of the reel pump and right behind the upper shiv uh, on the feeder house and that's the feed accelerator left hand side bearing uh, housing. Here we're looking at the feed accelerator drive pulley on the right hand side of the combine. This this uh, zerk right here greases the shaft for the feed accelerator and that is a 400 hour grease zerk. Now we're up here behind the rotor at the rotor torque sensing unit there's a gear case back there we're looking at the dipstick plug. You need to check that oil about every 400 hours or once a season. Here we're looking at the, the pulley on the outside, the left hand side of the combine on the end of the main engine gear case that drives your unloading auger. Uh, there's a zerk down inside of the pulley. Uh, it's hard to see here on camera, but uh, it's a once a year 400 hour zerk and it'll be down inside of the shiv. Uh, you need to hit that once a year. Here we're looking at one of the rear, uh, rear tires and in this area, all this knuckle area, there's four grease zerks. There's two on the spindle, there's one on the on the axle, and then there's one on the tie rod. Uh, those are, if you're in muddy muddy conditions, you need to do those about every 50 hours. If uh, you're just in normal combine harvesting conditions, those are gonna be a once a season or 400 hours zerk. Here we're looking on the inside of the final drive on the front, on the front tires. Um, this zerk needs to be greased every 50 hours if you're in heavy mud conditions. If you're in normal harvesting condition, uh, once a season or every 400 hours will do. Here we're looking at the lower cleaning fan drive. This zerk right here is a 50 hour zerk. The one on the inside next to the bearing is a 400 hour zerk. Here we're looking at the shoe auger drive. Right here, this is a 400 hour zerk as well. It's a once a season or 400 hour zerk. It's on the right hand side of the combine. And this is what drives your conveyor augers underneath the concave. Now we're looking on the right hand side of the feeder house at the top. This is the feeder house drive slip clutch. There's two zerks on the slip clutch and that's 400 hour zerk. So once a season or every 400 hours and you need to grease that until grease is forced out past the seal. Here we're looking at the tailings auger drive clutch, the slip clutch. The, there's a zerk on it that needs to be greased every 400 hours. It's right up in behind the shiv up on the shaft right where the pulley goes on the shaft every 400 hours. Now we're up in the grain tank uh, on the front side of the fountain auger. Uh, this is your fountain auger drive gear case and there's a dipstick here. Uh, once a year you need to check that oil level and make sure it's uh, properly filled. Now we're looking at the main engine gear case filter. Uh, this filter needs to be changed once a year. Also is the main hydraulic filter, which is down under the pump stack, and that also needs to be changed once a year. This is the third of three hydraulic filters that need to be changed every year. This is down on the left-hand side near the main valve stack, and again, there's three of these hydraulic filters. The other two are up in the engine compartment, and they need to be changed once a season. This is the engine oil filter. This filter is a paper-type element. 
uh, simply remove, when you get ready to change the oil and filter, remove this cap or loosen it. What that will do is that will release a check valve in the bottom of the filter housing that will allow the oil in here to drain out. Uh, then you can drain your, your, your crankcase. Once your crankcase is empty, you can remove this filter and throw it away. There's no need to allow it to drain for 24 hours as with past spin-on filters. Here we're at the battery box. Uh, there's two jumper posts, positive and negative. There's also a battery switch that you can shut the power to the rest of the combine off for storage over the winter. But just flip this switch one way or the other to turn power on or turn power off. Now we're located at the fuse box. Uh, this is located right above the battery box. Uh, the fuse panel, they're all 30 amp fuses and they're the micro fuses. Uh, these are all located right here and these are the only fuses on the machine. 